Good evening, all. Myself, Saili Gupte from Mangro Foundation. Today, we have with us Mr. Harshal Karve, a marine biologist working with Mangro Foundation. On behalf of Mangro Foundation, I would like to wish you all a happy World Ocean Day. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Harshal to start with our session. Thank you, Sally. So today we are here oh, to celebrate World Ocean Day. Uh, we always uh, celebrate World Ocean Day on 8 June. Uh, so why do we celebrate uh, World Ocean Day on 8 June? So because it was proposed by Canada's International Center for Ocean and the Ocean Institute of Canada. So they propose uh, to celebrate World Ocean Day on 8 June so that we can uh, protect and conserve our uh, ocean and uh, so and we can spread some awareness about it. So later, it was officially recognized by the United Nations in 2008. So since then, we are uh, always celebrating uh, World Ocean Day on 8 June. So this year, we have uh, a theme on the uh, life and livelihood. So every year we have different themes to celebrate World Ocean Day. So this year we have uh, life and livelihood. So ocean is the a complex ecosystem. Uh, and when do we say ocean? It's a large water body of salt water. And this ecosystem, it is always connected to humans. Uh, so you must be knowing that uh, we humans were originated from uh, water. Our origin is connected to water. So it is very important uh, for us. And today also in day-to-day -day life, it is always connected to, to our uh, life and livelihood. So uh, that's why this theme is very important. And uh, let's see how uh, the ocean is connected with our life. So you must be knowing that there are uh, different types of oceans and this world uh, water body, the large ecosystem, this large water body is divided into various uh, oceans uh, as per their uh, zoogeographical uh, locations. So there is Arctic Ocean uh, in the north and then we have Atlantic Ocean in between uh, United States and Africa. And uh, we have large ecos, a large ocean that is Pacific Ocean. And in the south, we have Southern Ocean, or it is also known as Antarctic Ocean. And uh, I would like to say it is, uh, uh, so Indian Ocean is our own ocean, I would like to say, uh, as it is connected to India. And uh, since uh, this ocean is named after India, as India is projected, uh, projecting into this ocean. So it is uh, on the west, it is connected to uh, Africa and on the uh, east, uh, it is connected to the Australia. So this uh, Indian Ocean is basically the third largest ocean and it is named after India. So it has some regional seas. So uh, we have Arabian Sea on uh, our west side and then we have uh, Lakadu Sea. Uh, on the eastern coast, we have Bay of Bengal, and uh, below the Bay of Bengal, we have Andaman Sea. So, this is how this Indian Ocean is divided into uh, four uh, regional seas. Uh, so, these ecosystems, these are very diverse ecosystems. So, uh, there are different types of ecosystems in the ocean. So, first is coral reef. So I often wonder how these uh, tiny, uh, small, soft-bodied animals can secrete a layer of calcium carbonate and forms a reef structure, which eventually protects our coastline as well as uh, it forms a complex ecosystem. So it is a very, very, very diverse ecosystem and uh, it is also known as a sink of carbon. It also absorbs or the ocean, it uh, absorbs lots of carbon. So then we have intertidal ecosystems. So where the ocean is connected to the land. Uh, and so during the uh, low tide and high tide, it forms a tidal cycle. And uh, it creates a different uh, ecosystem overall from the uh, deep water ecosystem. 
so uh, during the low tide water, water recedes from these areas and uh, so these animals the animals which lives in intertidal area they are adapted uh, to this uh, particular uh, habitat or particular uh, you know uh, environment then we have very important uh, ecosystem that is mangrove ecosystem uh, so recently a cyclone called uh, tokte uh, hit our coast and most of the areas where mangroves were present so those areas were saved by the uh, by the mangroves so the effect of the this uh, tokte cyclone uh, was reduced tremendously by this mangroves uh, mangroves and mangrove ecosystem so it is this ecosystem is very uh, important for us and uh, you can see uh, in this picture that uh, the roots are going down uh, in the water and some roots are coming up so it is a unique ecosystem which uh, these trees basically these are the trees which grows uh, in the uh, marine or salt water ecosystem so they are adapted to uh, the creek or a marine environment and various animals they are associated with the animals uh, with the mangroves so there are uh, lots of fish uh, which travel back to the mangroves for, for uh, breeding then we have lots of lots of invertebrates uh, which travels to and fro from high tide to low tide uh, and then we have uh, otters then uh, sometimes we also see some uh, turtles or dolphins uh, uh, entering into these ecosystems in search of food uh, so uh, the list goes on so let's see uh, what kind of uh, uh, diversity uh, this ecosystem harbors so uh, it uh, has a variety variety of eco uh, organisms so i'll rather say that uh, most of the phylums in the world um, they are present in the oceans uh, so you can imagine how diverse our oceans are so these are some uh, pictures of uh, coral reefs and some invertebrates so it starts from the invertebrates and also it ends to the reptiles and marine mammals so some marine mammals they are adapted to live in the oceans uh and uh, they they are uh, like the animals like turtles they are uh, living from the jurassic era in the oceans and they are they are not yet adapted so it, it, this is the perfect uh, habitat for them so these turtles they uh, they spend their lots of, all of the life in the ocean except the female turtle it comes to the uh, land particularly the sandy beaches to lay eggs uh, and again goes back to the sea uh, so this is how this uh, complex ecosystem is has been formed uh, over the period of time so this ecosystem it provides provides lots of uh, services to us uh, primarily uh, it produces lots of oxygen so this oceans it has phytoplankton and if i am not wrong so almost uh, 50% of the world's oxygen is produced by this uh, phytoplankton and they are also the primary pro pro products then uh, we have uh, secondary producers those are basically fish shellfish and what what we have uh, seen till now most of these animals which feeds on the uh, smaller creatures in the ocean and uh, again i already told you that uh, these uh, ecosystems they act as a carbon sink so they absorb lots of lots of carbons in the ocean and also mangroves uh, does the same so when they absorb this uh, carbon so the temperature of the ocean uh, is rising uh, by day by day uh, and eventually it uh, it's affecting uh, on these marine uh, animals so you must be familiar with uh, with the term coral bleaching so when uh, the ocean it absorbs the carbon so it traps the heat in the sea surface and the sea surface temperature uh, is increasing and uh, the small increase in the sea surface temperature eventually adversely affect uh, the corals and they bleach and eventually they die 
uh, but these uh, very corals or these uh, coral reefs they protect our uh, coastline like mangroves and it also uh, forms uh, forms a complex ecosystem and uh, we get lots of uh, you know benefits from those coral, uh, coral reefs uh, we uh, do eco tourism and uh, we, those are basically the nursery grounds for uh, lots of fish so we get uh, so it retreats, uh, it harbors lots of uh, habitat for lots of fishes. Then we also get uh, coastal protection and uh, sometimes uh, it's a recreation zone uh, for us. So we often like to go on the roam on the beaches or uh, uh, go for snorkeling or diving as a fun. So this is how this ecosystem is uh, benefiting for human beings. So uh, for the same, uh, Mangrove Foundation uh, has uh, initiated some livelihood activities uh, with respect uh, to uh, mangrove ecotourism or uh, this, uh, some uh, fish culture or uh, grass gardening in the mangroves. So my colleague uh, Saili Joshi will uh, give you some information about livelihood activities of Mangrove Foundation. Thank you so much, Harshal. We all have heard about the life part of the ocean. Now we will look into the livelihood part of the ocean. Whenever we think about the livelihood from the ocean, the first thing strikes our mind is the fishing for the edible fishes. But ocean provides several different livelihoods other than the fishing. The ocean is full of beautiful creatures and fishes. Whenever we see the picture of these beautiful fishes or we see the fish tanks, we often think to have one in our houses. These fishes or these fish tanks increase the aesthetic value of our houses as well as give a calming effect to the residents. But these benefits have increased the demand of the ornamental fishes like clownfish in the market. Uh, these clownfishes, the capturing of these clownfishes or these ornamental fishes is not an easy task as these fishes hide inside the coral reefs on the ocean bed. Oftenly, these beds are destroyed for capturing the fishes and thus it leaves the severe effect on the oceans. This all can be stopped by the means of artificial hatchery rearing and the rearing of these ornamental fishes. The Mangrove Foundation and Mangrove Cell of Maharashtra Forest Department have undertaken the uh, scheme of government of Maharashtra, namely mangrove conservation and livelihood generation, under which we undertake the ornamental fish rearing project. This project starts with the hatchery uh, setup of, for these ornamental fishes. The forest department had set up a special hatchery to rear the ornamental fish. Then these fishes, the tiny juveniles of these fishes, are then uh, given to the beneficiaries of the scheme for rearing and after two months they sell these fishes. The Mangu Cell and, Mara, uh, and Mangu Foundation have, carrying, carrying, uh, uh, have been carrying this project in all five coastal districts of Maharashtra since last four years. Uh, the efforts of the team and locals started to fruit started to show the fruits this year even during the pandemic crisis this ornamental project uh, the beneficiaries could earn around 2.40 lakhs from this ornamental project and even received many uh, news article appreciations of the scheme and the projects we also undertake different sustainable aquaculture projects such as mud crab farming from hatchery rearing of crab to the final sellable crab rearing, the fish cage culture from nursery rearing to the harvest uh, of jitada, that is Asian sea bass, and kaundra, that is pearl spot fish, 
the oyster farming with rack and rend method, mussel farming with the rack and rend method, and last but not the least, the ecotourism, which includes mangrove boat ride, kayaking, mangrove trail, stargazing. These all provide the alternate source of livelihood for the coastal communities. Thus, ocean is not just for the fishing, but it also provides uh, many variety of the livelihoods to the coastal communities. Thank you. Lastly, we would like to wish you all again the happy ocean day and have a good day.